Hey fourth graders, Mrs. Lawson here. Welcome back. I just wanted to say I'm so excited to keep going, but I also wanted to see who remembers what we did last time. So lose your skeletons. Skeletons intact. As you remember, if you lose your skeleton, you should fall over and turn into a blob of jelly pretty much. So just wanted to see who was still with me there from last time. So today we are no longer focusing on the human skeleton. We have kind of moved on to learning about different creature skeletons. So it's pretty cool stuff. Our learning intention for today is we are learning to analyze key words and phrases to determine how they explain the topic and concepts in the text. So we're looking at author's word choice. We know we are successful when we can identify the main idea of the text, then identify key words and phrases in the text. So the whole reason we have to identify the main idea is because that will tell us what the key words and phrases are. Then we're gonna use details from the text to answer those questions because it always makes us seem smarter because we're scholars, right? We back up our answers with facts. For our foundational skill today, we are still working with these same suffixes that come at the end of the word. We have ist, if, and ness. And you're gonna go and you're gonna read Aunt Lisa's mosaic. And then you're gonna tape yourself recording it and see how you do. Make sure you focus on those words like artist, cooperative, I always say that word wrong, cooperative, creative, happiness, massive, native, perfectionist, and quietness. So vocabulary, this word is a pretty fun word. It is sturdy. So in this picture, I kind of tied it into earthquakes, which we're gonna be learning about later in the year. Because this earthquake is shaking the ground, but the, but the buildings are sturdy. So what does that say about the word sturdy? Are those buildings falling apart? What are they doing? You're right, something that will not break. It's well built, that's what sturdy means. So today, why, Ooh, we got a stop sign first thing. Why would scientists want to compare bones of animals that lived in the past to bones of animals living today? Huh, why, like, why would Mary Annie want to look at those bones from a long time ago and compare them to animals today? Look at that, I just made a connection, guys. So I like to do this, like I make a connection. Good readers are always trying to make connections to other things they've read, other things that they've learned, and they're always growing their brain. So, reptiles and amphibian skeletons. Reptiles and amphibians have endoskeletons like mammals. Their endoskeletons help them move around on land and sometimes in the water. So if we remember an amphibian is something that lives on land and water, so their skeleton is made to help them do that. So reptiles and amphibians also have skulls and spines and most have legs and tails. Crocodiles are reptiles. They have strong jaw bones and teeth built for gripping prey of all sizes. Short, sturdy leg bones make them quick on land. Almost half of crocodile's vertebrae are in their long, thick tails. They use their tails as powerful paddles to move quickly through water. So it says down here, crocodiles are fast on land and in water because of their strong skeleton. Now over here, exploring fossils. The bones of animals from the past can tell us a lot about how they lived. In ancient rocks, scientists have found fossils of reptiles, such as dinosaurs that have long been extinct. To learn how they lived, scientists compare ancient bones to bones 
of animals living today. So if you notice my voice got a little weird on ancient, because I like to help me remember what that word means. It makes me sound kind of old, right? I'm ancient. So whenever I get to that word, it just triggers in my brain that ancient means old, and I say it with that weird voice. So this is gonna answer our question for us today. Why do scientists want to compare those bones of animals that lived in the past to the bones of animals living today? And I think you fourth graders can do this without me right here. What do you think? Good job, I heard some of you say it. It's to learn how they lived and they compare them to how they're living today to see how they've changed. So you're looking at how they've adapted to their environments and how they've gotten better at surviving. Great job, fourth graders. Oh my goodness, do you guys see this crazy snake skeleton? Whoo, gives me the heebie-jeebies. All right, snakes are also reptiles. Snakes do not have arms or legs, so they depend on their many tiny flexible vertebrae to move. Their vertebrae allows them to move in many different directions. A large snake can have up to 400 vertebrae in its back. Guys, we only have, we don't even have 400 bones in our body and a snake could have 400 vertebrae. Whoa. With a pair of ribs attached to almost every one. So this is the red spitting cobra. This is what it looks like in real life. And then if you had take everything away and just looked at its skeleton, this is what it would look like. Amazing turtles. Turtles and tortoises are remarkable reptiles because they have both endoskeletons and exoskeletons. Their hard shells are exoskeletons that protect their soft internal organs. And the internal endoskeleton these animals can hide their heads and limbs inside their hard shell when frightened by a predator. Who knew that? That is such a cool fact that tortoises have both an endoskeleton and an exoskeleton. So cool. All right, Oop, we got another stop sign. How does the photograph of the frog and the diagram of the frog's skeleton help us understand the description from the text. So we're taking all the pieces and when we put them together, how does that help our understanding? Amphibians, such as frogs and toads, have an endoskeleton that helps them move in and out of water. A frog's endoskeleton helps it push up off its strong springy legs, springy back legs. Frogs don't have ribs, this allows frogs to land on their chest without breaking any bones. Oh, wow. Another amphibian, the salamander, has a strong bony endoskeleton. We're talking about this guy over here. Has a strong bony endoskeleton. A salamander skeleton and, oh my gosh, a salamander skeleton and well-developed muscles help it move easily, both on land and in the water. To move fast, a salamander sways its body. To leap, it flexes and straightens its tail. Over here it says, did you know? The salamander has a special way to escape attacks. Guys, you're gonna wanna listen to this, this is crazy. It can detach its tail when another animal grabs it and run to safety. The attacker is left with only its tail. I just can't, it can literally just, if you grab its tail, it just drops its tail and leaves. Weird, so crazy. Down here it says strong leg muscles and webbed feet give a frog power to jump from place to place. So now if we look at all of this, how does it help us? Well, I'm gonna give you a second to think about that first before I tell you, before we talk about it. Make sure you're telling me your ideas because I want to hear them. Mm -hmm. You guys are so on the right track, it's awesome. 
So the main things that I thought about as we were reading, which I'm sure most of you thought of as well, was up here when it says, a frog's endoskeleton helps it to push off its strong springy back legs. So in this picture, I can see it pushing off of its back legs. So I can see what they're saying in a picture, which my brain sees a lot better when there's a picture with it. Then I also was thinking how it was talking about how it doesn't have ribs. So I could see right here, it doesn't have any ribs and that, and it has a purpose for that. So it can land on its stomach. Wow. Pretty crazy. So basically it's just showing us also what the frog looks like in real life, what we see, and then what's underneath. Cause I wouldn't be able to see that any other way besides this. So it's showing us it's got its vertebrae, its skull, its finger bones. It's just dissecting all the pieces of the frog and showing us. Good job fourth graders. Man, we're already done reading for today. Ugh, it makes me so sad cause I was having so much fun. All right, so our key concepts. What are some words and phrases the author used to describe amphibian and reptile skeletons? So let's look back. This whole section is amphibian and reptiles, right? So if we're thinking about this crocodile, what was one way the author described it? So let's look back. Well, they definitely used this word a lot, endoskeletons and exoskeletons, right? Because some had a little bit of both. Then I know for a fact for this guy, he has to have strong jaw bones, right? Sturdy leg bones. And powerful. So it's like the alligator, his skeleton is just powerful. That's how his rep, like, I just feel like that's what they use for his skeleton because he's a powerful guy, the alligator is. But then when we get to like the snake, it's not really powerful, right? What is his skeleton more like? Right here, right? Tiny, flexible. Mm -hmm. And this guy, he has an endo and an exoskeleton. Pretty crazy. What about for this one? What can you find? Mm hmm good job. Yeah, someone said bony. Yeah, because some of the skeletons are a little more bony than humans in amphibians and reptiles. They got a lot more, right? That, especially this one, I would say, is kind of bony. They have so many vertebrae and ribs. Yeah, definitely. I think you guys did a great job looking back in the text for those details, just like that success criteria we talked about. Now, on to the reading response. This one is cool. So we kind of talked about how that crocodile is strong and that's how its skeleton was made, right? So what makes a crocodile's tail so strong? So you're gonna have to go back on that page and really dig deep and figure out what makes that crocodile's tail so strong and then show me it in the text. Fourth graders, you did an amazing job today. Keep up the great work. Have a great rest of your day. Bye guys.